Hi everyone, it's Alex, and this week's video is coming up a bit early, and if you can't tell, the lighting behind me has changed a little just because I'm actually filming this in the morning before I go to work. This week's video is up early because this weekend I'll actually be out of town. I'm doing sort of a staycation with my friends because I'm sort of an honorary bridesmaid for my friend's bachelorette party. I'm also part of the groomsmen side because two of my best friends are actually getting married to each other, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. But for today's video, I wanted to review The Waves by Virginia Woolf. As you guys might know already, this is actually my second Woolf. I read Mrs. Dalloway before earlier this year, and I also read Woolf's um, sort of collection of essays, and that was Moments of Being. And I will say immediately that I absolutely loved this book. Um, in a way, people cite this one definitely as more of Wolf's experimental novels, although I found myself much more engaged with this work than I was with Mrs. Dalloway, just because in Mrs. Dalloway the change of perspective was a bit more confusing to me. Although this book also doesn't stray away from trying to really implement that sort of experimentation of switching perspective, but this time between six different characters. And with those six characters, they all are friends, and we get to know about them throughout the years. But mainly also, because this isn't really a spoiler because it's a part of the blurb of the book, they do have a friend that passes away, so it also deals with their grief and loss of that friend. This book is also told in a series of sections, and there's sort of these interludes where it's describing sort of this cycle of day to night as well as with the waves. And my guess is is that not only do these passages in between sections kind of serve as a nice breaking point to kind of catch your breath and kind of see and understand everything that's happened, but also to serve as a metaphor sort of to see what's about to happen. And since this seems so formatted quite linearly, um, also with the structure I would say I really do love just because the sections change as they do so does our perspective of narration. For example the first section is dedicated to childhood and it seems like we get this sort of third person perspective while as the book progresses we get more of a first person perspective and then lastly we get a whole perspective dedicated to one of the characters. And plot wise this book doesn't really have one. But I think that's a part of the magic because I feel like with the tone of this book, it's certainly, I would say, like melancholy, but it's also definitely with Wolf, I feel like what really sets her apart is because everything I read by her, I feel like it's a desperation for trying to understand the world. And I feel like truthfully, that Wolf writes as a way of trying to understand the world the best way she can. So starting off with childhood, we do have of the six characters, there are three that are introduced to us in a sort of interesting way. There's Susan, Ginny, and Louie, and Susan finds Ginny and Louie kissing behind a bush together somewhere. And for me, I think what this does is that I feel like so much of what reminds us that we're human is actually our insecurities. And I feel like this childhood section where it does take on that third person perspective it reminds us just in a way to me how trivial those things are. So with love, of course, that means there's a risk of loss and heartbreak and pain. And I feel like all of this in the beginning is to sort of set up how our emotions prepare us for even bigger losses, like our losses of friends and loved ones as we get older, like this book does. Of course, though, there are these little quirks that set other characters apart, like how Louis is actually sort of insecure about his Australian accent. But then we have other characters like Bernard, who wants to be a writer when he's older, and he's so fixated on language and linguistics and the term of phrases and how certain phrases feel appropriate for one time and then inappropriate for the other, but how there's so much power with words. For example, whenever, when he's much older, Bernard has a child, he's sort of confused, thinking of love and sorrow because of finding out that his friend had just passed away while also just having a newborn child. So he doesn't know if it's love or sorrow and who it's all for. And speaking of Bernard, he is the one that actually takes on the whole last section of the book with his own perspective. And with that, I think it's so representative of how the whole structure of the waves works, because in the beginning, we are introduced to all six characters from this third person. In the middle section, it's dedicated to all of them talking about themselves in different paragraphs with I. And then lastly, it's Bernard alone with his own thoughts as everyone's gotten much older and maybe separated or not connected as well anymore. Although it seems to be the thread of what keeps everyone together is not only their friend that has passed away, but also the whole idea of everyday life and how in a way it's so heavy to take on that burden of everyday life 
mainly, for example, with Bernard, or I'm sorry, Louis, talking about things like writing his name over and over just to remember I have a name and what does that really mean? Whereas Bernard in the last section talks about how every day follows. There's Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. And even Susan, of course, talking about how seasons change and then everything always becomes the same. Although I do think this acknowledgement of the everyday life makes it much easier for most of these characters to understand their, their true passions and intents. And mainly, I feel like a lot of characters do appreciate these sort of deeper things like art and beauty. Specifically, Neville and Bernard are two characters I think of immediately because it turns out that Neville does become an esteemed poet and how a lot of these characters, whenever we do tap into their internal monologues, do like feel this distress about the world, even more specifically other characters than most like Rhoda. And I guess all of that could be to say is what I loved, what I read at the end, which really secured my appreciation for this book is something that Bernard says. Here at this table, what I call my life, it is not one life that I look back upon. I am not one person. I am many people. I do not altogether know who I am. Ginny, Susan, Neville, Rhoda, or Louie, or how to distinguish my life from theirs. And I think that's really beautiful. And again, thinking of the structure of this novel, how perspectives change and how Bernard is solely the last one to be talking in the last section, I think that quote is all the more powerful because that's where that quote comes from and how we also as readers feel alone because we don't get those insights to the other characters anymore. And as someone that cares very deeply for my friends and I similarly have a very tight knit group of small friends, I feel even more attached to this work. And I guess that would bring us back to these passages about the waves and how we're, our lives are all like waves. We exist back and forth and even from night to day, we're still there. Our life works in a cycle in a certain rhythm. Um, the novel talks a lot about that sense of rhythm too, which I love. So yeah, I would definitely recommend picking up the waves. Um, I thought it was great. I. Don't know if it would be a great first pick for Wolf. I might still even choose Mrs. Dalloway over this as your first pick, but I'm reading Orlando right now and I'm also really liking that, so I'm a bit on a wolf kick. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.